Hello, I'm the Demolisher 13, and where have I been all this time? Well, I'll tell you. I've been working on uh, version 4.0 for the factory. Oh, a little bit of a mistake there. It's been a bit of a wrong, long process. So, what I've done is I've completely remade everything, hence the four point. Now, this is a similar design as to the last design we had, as you can see. But this was a little on, a little uneven, which led to complications. And as I've kind of worked on this, I've also noticed there were a few more issues. Uh, one, when we did the whole sector in one go, the logistic bots just couldn't keep up. So we're now doing everything fourths, but still keeping one sector. I've also tried to reduce the cost of everything, so instead of uh, checking for everything in here, we're only checking for two. Uh, I also re redid the entire uh, signal system um, because we have a belt system. And the reason why I had to redo the signal system was as we're sending ores down the belt system, we need to figure out which way is the closest to the nearest refinery. So we have to take all the refinery signal signals and compare and contr compare and figure out which one's the sm smallest and then send them that way. Or no, largest, my bad. Smallest means we're going away, largest means we're going cl closer to it. Sorry about all the stuttering. Uh, we also have a pipe network. I was told that this actually worked wonders for the factory. Now, the other thing about the uh, belt system, it's not meant to take all the ores off of the logistic system because it's one belt isn't fast enough for that. But it does help take stress off of the logistic bots, which frees up more bots to do other things. So I'm trying to just spread my workload over multiple systems to just kind of help the logistic system keep up. Kind of that whole idea of not throwing all of your eggs in one basket. Um, a few more notes. Yes, we are not, er, my bad, we're not doing trains due to the fact that, yes, trains are actually the most efficient way to move goods around. But without adding another mod to the game, we cannot automate trains to go from one station to another. Furthermore, they take up way too much space. And what I mean is, here I condense this into two square, er, yeah, two squares wide. I could put a miner, electric mining drill, right here, and one here and we're now harvesting whatever was in the middle. Trains, this would just be the track. Then we'd have to do the, then we would also have to do the uh, un loading and unloading station and we would not be able to mine up anything underneath that. Furthermore, I can't make a turn in this tiny space. There's just not enough room to, for the train to make that kind of turn. Actually, I could give that a try, but no. Um, anything else? Well, in a bit here, I'll show you the uh, blueprint, the flow charts for both factory 3.7.2 and for 4.0, just to show you how different they are. But without further ado, let me show you 4.0. Uh, everything you're about to see is a work in progress and is not by any means the final product. Now, what would I mean by that in, say, 4.0? Well, four point here we don't in one 
Blueprint 1, we don't have any way to call for a book and then put in here. But we do have a way to check to see if we are getting our signals for saying, hey, we are getting the logistics syst system, as you can see on the right. And if we can get that, then we know we can keep building on. Um, oh, and the system's not going to go forward till I turn this off. Now, actually, this would be a perfect opportunity for me to explain how this works. We This is a tail gate, or a wait command, so it waits for a certain condition, and then when said condition is met, the timer will go off, which will then activate the commands, and we will get the next gate, which will spawn down here, which will do its statement, and then go up here, and back and forth. Uh, each, uh, this is a if gate, uh, as we wait. It's going to check to see if it's got any artillery. If the answer is no, well, it's going to build some artillery. Because we need a way to deal with those pesky bugs from afar. And each uh, gate has a set of conditions it needs to meet. It has to check to see if there, there is no other signals coming from a previous gate. It checks to make sure all of its command, uh, constant combinators are in place. It checks to make sure all of its decider combinators are in place. Okay, so one, two, three. What was the four? fourth one again? Huh. Have you ever had that moment where you just forget what something was? <laughs> uh, oh well. In any regard, just to know, these statements will not uh, activate until they know oh, that they're completely there. And you can tell which statement is not, not running when the lights are turned off. In this case, now we're checking for ores. It's now building one fourth of the uh, sector's uh, ore. And as you can see, we're now also s checking to see how much we got. Well, this is just checking to see if we have ore. We do, so once we hit 900T, we'll move to the next statement. We did. It's now making the pipe network slash uh, provider chest. And then these belts will transport everything onto the grid. And it's checking to see if it's got uranium. Signal. These. These. One sec, I, I really am curious. Z. That'd be that. Oh, it's checking to see if this is in place. That's why this one doesn't have it, because it's a command statement. Ah, it's now building the pipe network. Now, one major difference you will notice when the final product comes out is this is going a lot faster than what I actually would be doing. I'd be slowing this down because the factory would have about think of hundreds of these things running when it's at its peak and the logistics system has to keep track of everything. Oh, the nightmare the logistics system will have. Move 
moving on to the next statement. Now the next sector. I'll just zoom back here so you can see this in action. No, when we do finish and the site system can't figure out or it ends up going to the wait command for the field to finish mining, uh, I will then do a quick insertion to make it think that the field is empty so we can move on further into the script. Let me just do that right now. Uh, take times up by minus one. Set. Wait. I will say, this thing can probably process a chunk of land a bit faster than what a person could. When you get like four or five of these things running simultaneously. Oh, I will mention this. If, as we're building the next segment, we do tell all the miners in the previous segment to turn off their reading, so we're no longer reading the previous sector. This is so we can tell if the current one we're mining has anything in it or not. So you'll see in a moment.
I must say, it is kind of just fun watching these, thi watching this thing run. It'd be kind of really fun to see like 10, 15 of these things running simultaneously. Now, as you can see, we still are getting the signal of our total raw uranium input because we haven't got our statement built yet. That turns off. It's been turned off. Um, I think that is a bug I would need to look into because... No, reading it yet. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, we're now back to thousand. Never mind. We're doing just fine. Uh, I might have to look into that a bit more. Might have a minor or two that might trip that whole s system. going to think this. So we now kind of have the whole sector filled with miners. It can tell if there's ores or not due to the fact you can't place a electric miner on a sec on land with any without any ore. And I've tried to be as space efficient as possible. Something tells me this will slow your game down as it gets bigger with all the processes it's having to calculate. <laughs> uh. And you're going to move to 20. It's the next one I want to be wary of because it's going to... A do a check for ores in the whole sector. And once it checks for whole, all ores, it will then go into, if yes, a expanding statement where it starts to expand into the nearby sectors. Since this one's going to be stuck mining for a while. If no, it just goes to the, uh, it just moves on where if yes it moves to the white statement and we want to just kind of say no we are not we're going to skip that because if it tries to expand we're going to lose a lot of the surrounding area that is to say I'm not going to show you it or as to say I will show you it just not at the moment okay so there's that statement Ten million or um, I just turn that to copper. There's no copper, so it's going to be tricked. But yeah, it would uh, look for uh, uranium usually, as well as copper. Answer came to now. Now, 
So even though it was no, it still goes to the the wait command, and then it moves on. Um. Yeah. But because there's no ores, it'll just m speed through this. The only reason why I have it going here is in a typical build to go up and down, it's just simpler to go here than to make another blueprint just for it to go back up, to line up. You'll, you'll see in a moment when we get to the whole flow chart. I want you to just do copper. This light goes on when uh, all of these check out. Um, you can kind of mess around with these. I did make this a bit more flexible. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure. It, it's kind of funny because I have to re-explore my own statements at times to figure out what they do. Yeah, I work with them all the time. It, I guess someone's going to say that's bad. I find that hysterical, to be honest. So, now we're going to clear the field. And then check for oil, I believe. Oh, that's one of the most satisfying things. Now this is going to clear the central field, we have to get another statement to clear out outer field. So it's a two part clearing command. And let's just, the, the logistics system is going to have a nightmare carrying everything out. This is the only part that I end up doing as a whole, because why not? What I'd probably end up doing is I end up just stupidly increasing this timer till uh, I know for a fact that this would be cleared out, so I'd just make this two or three minutes out. Now the reason why this isn't firing off is it's still receiving a signal. Yeah, the last statement is still sending out a statement. So if we were to send our statement, we would end up confusing and completely wrecking the whole statement. So we are waiting till this gets demolished. That's why that failsafe, or that's why that checker is in place. So this can take some time to get pulled apart at times. And when all these lights are in place, then we know for a fact it's perfectly safe for the statement to be running. And so it does. The statement is perfectly safe. We're not receiving any signals from the previous statement. We're running. Construction bots are finishing up their, jo their job. The field is looking pretty clean. Now we just need to get this outer field cleaned up. Which will be given out in about... Right about now. This took so long to do and to get everything pinpoint accurate. <laughs> Outer field is looking pretty good. And 
next statement, we are checking for water. Or no, we're checking for oil, my bad. So how oil goes into these pipe networks, yes, it was trying to place oil and couldn't because there's no oil deposits. But it still has to put oil into the uh, network. Oil finds its way to these uh, storage tanks, which then send the signal back into here, which we can use to determine if there's oil or not. Uh, oil goes in the left pipe. Yes, it's still the left pipe on the other side because if you follow the pipe, it's top, then still left, and the cycle repeats where water goes on the right side. And if we need to access oil from the other side, it has this nice little T here. Same for water. And we use the pumps because we want this to be one way. If the oil could go backwards, then that defeats the purpose of checking the field to see if there's oil or not, because one field of oil would just feed all the others, thus screwing the whole system up. So the pumps are our one-way valves that prevent that from happening. The answer was no, there was no oil. So now it's just making a clear statement. Now, a complementary mod to this system would be a mod that helps spread out ha spread out the storage of all resources. Each sector has four storage crates, or eight, my bad. So they're not going to be ridiculously close to m most of the resources, but they're not. They shouldn't be ridiculously far from them either. Now. What I could do is I could put a limiter on each storage bin. So instead of being able to store, say, a thousand or, or a few hundred thousand, we could only store, say, I could do something like this, where it just gets one row or something. I don't know, that, that's more of the finer detail I'll be looking into once the main script is finished. No, the script is not finished. It's being worked on. The current spot, the current spot I'm working on is the crafting plant for this whole thing. I have made an updated version of the power plant for it. Uh, I'll make sure to show you guys that once we get through this whole script. I know this is a bit tedious to look at one sector, but at least this is better than what I used to do with sec with Factory 2.0. Uh, what was I thinking when I was building this? Wait, is that where they st Oh, they're still, okay. Um, you know, maybe some artillery would be nice. Eh, probably not the best idea right now. I will say, coming up with the blueprint for the pumps for this factory was a lot easier than coming up with the blueprints for the other factories. Because the other ones were trying to do the whole thing, where here I only had to do one thing and then keep rotating it. Oh, and then I also had to figure out a system so when I was looking for oil, it would know it's checking this sector and not that sector. On the surface, this sounds like a really easy concept to do. But there are so many little nitty gritty things you have to work on as you progress through it, else the whole system just collapses on itself. Ugh. 
Again, I'd be working on my timing for these. At, again, probably spreading them out like five minutes apart. I'm guessing it would take over an hour, maybe two hours to finish a script per sector. Once they're all spread out. Because right here, it's not even having the chance to fully finish it. So this is why I'd give it five minutes before the next one would go. The worst part is we're going to see this do it again because it's going to check for the next liquid. So actually, while this is running, I'm just going to leave you guys here. You guys can have fun watching this. I'll be right back.
We still checking for oil? I think you guys get the point. This is a very long script. Uh, I'm not going to put you through the burden of the uh, water because it's the same thing. So actually, let me just pick this book. Uh, that wasn't the best idea. Um, there it is. So. Answer is going to be no, it's going to run itself. Which would be 42. 42. So when it does have artillery though, it does put these little artillery shell or packages so. Uh okay. So while it's figuring out how to take care of that. Um Oh. Okay. So I think we go to fifty nine. Nine is a command statement to go to the next one. Okay. So sixty. Yeah, sixty. Yep. So command. Command. Um. Okay, so we're jumping to 62. systems just having a swell of time trying to figure out. So what are we doing in this new statement? Uh, we are checking for how much power the system has. Now we can't check the specifics like production and satisfactory rate. Or can we? Well we can only check the accumulator rate so we know we're doing good when the accumulators are 100%. And we know we're in trouble if the accumulator is at, say, 95%, because then that tells me we're not producing enough power. So, we measure the accumulators, and if the accumulators are below 90%, or equal to or below, if the accumulators are equal to or greater than 90%, they will give off a 1. And we'll see. I might ha have accidentally made this into the wrong statement, but we'll we'll see. Come on. So it we had enough power, we're not going to make the next script. And this would make 66. Okay, good to know. So we need 63. 
as this is 65. Do uh, wait for that to finish up its current script. But yeah, this is the power plant. I was thinking about adding batteries, but eh. The last script will, uh, or the last thing in the script will have batteries, so we're going to have enough of those. Uh, have you finished? There you go. So, let, let's have this. So here we can see we have solar panels and we got ourselves three sets of steam engines. And we have a nuclear power plant with its own uh, refinery system. It's got ten centrifuges to process uranium, two centrifuges that have uranium enriching, and one uh, assembler for making fuel rods. And everything set up that th these two are considered constants, they'll always be running. But as we have power starting to go on, or as our power level begins to drop, these uh, steam engines will begin to turn on one by one until we have even our power and if they're all turning on then we've maxed our grid and need to build in our power plant. I mean at this point on where we're just running off of pure electrical or pure solar power. Uh, and the statement, <laughs> the statement will keep running till the, uh, till these engines register without. If they don't have steam, they send a signal and say we don't have steam. Hey, can you uh, f finish this up, buddy? And we move to sixty-four. Sixty-four, and we can go back to putting you back in here. And we begin to clean up again. And we'll clean the central field. Oh yeah, and this is the maximum amount of uh, steam turbines to uh, nuclear power plants can power. Maybe not the most efficient setup, but not a whole lot I could do with the awkward spacing of everything. Oh uh, yeah, the construction bots are going to like this area better because everything takes up so much space. I thought I had 700 construction bots, so oh well. They still got the job done. And you... Okay, I was wondering why you had it fired. Do, do, do. to clean your out, outer field.
outer field cleared. I can't stress just how satisfying this is to see all these bots doing well, what I programmed to do. So now it's checking to see where the nearest um, the nearest assembly plant is, or if there is one. My bad. The answer is going to be no. So we'll move to 71, which, if I remember, right, isn't scripted yet. But if we were to say there is a 70. Why aren't you running? Oh. Okay, I guess there was a bit of a glitch with that one. Must have left that in. Like I said, not final version. But actually, this is a, a helpful hiccup. So I can now get the system to think that there is something. because else the script's going to end here. 67. I'm all the way up to 67. Okay. Okay, so this final piece is trying to determine is there another factory within uh, within range? If yes, we're not going to build our factory. If no, we will. Or assembly plant, my bad. So that's that. Let's end that. Book. Why do I keep sending you in the worst spot? Book. Where did I leave you? I need you, book. Where? Oh, where? Right. Yay! So I need to show you the expansion script. So what happens here is it's trying, well, thank you bots. Give you book back. Oh, wait, 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 I can't. So, need a 21, my bad. So what's going to happen is it's going to clear, <gasps> clear all the sectors around us after it checks it first checks to see if it receives a signal from the next sector. If no, then we know that sector is empty, so then we clear it, and then in order to be built in there, next. But I had to split this between two, um, yeah, between two commands. Actually, I'd probably fit the whole thing in one, I think about it. Whatever.
No, actually, that's on track. Yeah, it does actually kind of kill the outer outer side of the uh, pipe slash network. But rest assured. Good way of killing your grid. <laughs> and, well, I think that's a good point to show. Uh, we'll, we'll roll back here real quick. Okay, so we've rolled back. Yeah, that's the refinery that I currently got. Thinking about replacing the belt with the blue ones. Yeah, I'll probably end up doing that. I, anyways, I need to show you. Let's see, it was. Okay, so that's. There's expanding. And you can have that. So we saw how it deletes everything around it. Um, now let's show you that it can build around it. Come on. can't run because this is turned on. Oh, and if you're wondering what these are for, again, we're trying to compare and contrast. Uh, but if one, if S and W are equal, we'll just pick S. And so on. Why do we just pick a random one like that? Because uh, hopefully the next statement is a bit clearer. Um, why? Okay, I forgot. This is one of those glitches that I fixed. So what ends up happening is the uh, gate checker, or the decider coming near checker, can glitch where this gets above 100T. And what I did to fix this with the later ones was I did equal to or greater, and that fixed the whole system. That should be an issue for you guys because when you get the final product, they'll all be set to this. And if by some golly this gets out of whack, I do have a way for this to uh, fix itself. Because then if this just gets above, uh, way too far above, it resets the timer and everything just kind of fix itself. And as you can see, we have perfect, yep, yeah, perfect uh, expansion. Give out the clear command. Usually, artillery would have these cleared out, and we can then just expand. Now, before I go, let me show you the t differences in blueprints, or flow charts between the two uh, factories. And I'll be right back. Alright, avert your eyes, uh, this is a bit bright. Sorry about that. There's not a whole lot I can do other than zoom in. So, the last chart, as you can see, was fairly simple. It was a total of, I believe, like 30, 31, 33 blueprints. It, I actually liked how uh, simplified I made this. But 
the logistic system couldn't keep up. So I'll have a link to this one and it's actually a bit easier to follow. Oh, no. Everything got spread out. Uh, circle is your weight st or tilt statement. Uh, whatever shape this is, is your um, if and boxes are your command. And blue, um, yellow or no, no, orange would be your up statement, while blue would be your down. So up, down, up, down, up, down. And you know it's in the trend? I hope you are because then you can figure the system out. And as you can kind of see, it, it's actually kind of nice to see the flow chart as it kind of all just flows together as we go down. If you want to look at this in more detail, you can either pause the video or you could um, look at the chart yourself. Uh, this goes back up if this is correct. Down, down, down. If we don't have enough power, do, do, do. And all just kind of comes together. And we end. So this one's a total of 78, I believe. Yeah, yeah 78 blueprints versus this one being 33. So it's almost three times longer. Well, it's like 2.5 times longer, but it should get the job done better because the logistics system should be able to keep up. Uh, that's all I have for you guys, so have a good day.